One thing you've made reference to um, in your addresses and in your characterization of that time immediately after 9-11 when you were first speaking of was the feeling of America being under attack and, and the perspective change that that brings. Um, on Sunday in the Washington Post, Richard Clark had a column, and, and he was, of course, there at that time as well, in which he characterized the Bush administration as, as basically being in a state of shock. And I'm wondering what your characterization of those post-9-11 days were like, and when inevitably that sense of perspective did settle a bit, that immediate reaction, whether there were then adjustments made toward your policy given the change in perspective. The, um, trying to think how to uh, respond carefully and cautiously here. Um, I looked at the world the morning after 9-11, and what I saw was 16 acres of ashes in downtown New York City in the island of Manhattan. I saw a Pentagon that had suffered a severe blow. Um, you could, if you looked closely enough on television, see footage of American citizens jumping out of windows on the upper stories of the Trade Center because it was better than being burned to death. And I knew for a fact that if uh, we hadn't been successful, if the, the passengers on uh, Flight 93 hadn't been successful, they probably would also have taken out either the White House or the Capitol building. It's the worst attack on the homeland in the history of the Republic. We lost more people than we did at Pearl Harbor. Um, we had good reason to believe that there would be follow-on attacks. We'd seen attacks in 93 on the World Trade Center in New York, in 95 on our operations in Riyadh, in 96 on Kobar Towers, in 98 on the East Africa, Africa embassies, and in 2000 on the USS Cole. And now along comes 2011, or comes 9-11 uh, in 2001, and uh, there was a, an accelerating pace to the frequency and to the scope and scale of the attacks. We would have been absolutely, totally irresponsible if we hadn't taken the view that um, we had to do everything in our power in order to prevent that next attack. And um, that's exactly what we did. Now you can look back at it and uh, to some extent our success allows some of our fellow citizens to say, oh, there was nothing to worry about. You guys overemphasized how serious it was. Uh, you know, Dick Clark. Dick Clark, who was the head of the counterterrorism program in the run-up to 9-11. Um, he obviously missed it. Uh, fact is that we, uh, we did what we felt we had to do, and if I had it to do all over again, I would do exactly the same thing. I'd be just as tough and aggressive as I could to make certain that those individuals who wished us harm and who were prepared to kill thousands of Americans to achieve a political objective got what they had coming to them. And I think it was the right thing to do. And um, I, uh, uh, I don't have much tolerance or patience for those who suggest now the benefit of hindsight eight years later and uh, who they've forgotten what, uh, what in fact happened on 9-11. It was the right thing to do. The threat is still out there. We need to maintain our capabilities, and it's absolutely essential we not forget what happened then or what others are prepared to do with us. Just imagine, just imagine what would happen if you had 19 men in the middle of two of our major cities, not armed with airline tickets and box cutters, but with a nuclear weapon or a dose of plague or some other deadly biological instrument. That's the kind of world we live in. And uh, any administration or government that doesn't deal effectively with that threat, uh, I don't think would be doing its job.